Father, we thank you now. As we come down to preach the time. Pray, God, that you allow the to decrease and the Holy Spirit to increase. And God, as you have done in times past, that you would allow your spirit to speak through to me and this waiting congregation. We pray now that you open up our spiritual eyes and we might see the spiritual realm, our spiritual ears, and we can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. For truly you declare that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you, God, for the prayers. Thank you for the children. Thank you for the choir and the musicians. But now, God, we ask that you would feed us with that man that would cause us to live. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. This is the neighbor, the one that you didn't look at earlier and say, neighbor, neighbor. There, is a word there is a word from the Lord. From the Lord. Please, Please. Don't, interrupt me don't interrupt me as I get my word. They don't want to hear the word for themselves, and they don't want nobody else to hear it either. We just put that to a close. Luke 8, 43 and 48 from the New King James Version of the Bible. It's read out here in the Now, the one thing happened in Florida for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border for the tassel of Jesus' garment. And immediately, her flow of blood stopped. And if I could pause right there for a moment to say, uh, up until this point in our scriptures, in all of the synoptic gospels, no one records that there is anyone who has been healed, who has been, had a demon cast out of them, uh, that came up with what I would call a sneak attack. All right? Everybody has openly asked Jesus either to heal them or to do something for them. But here, this unnamed woman, she comes and she tries to sneak up behind Jesus, touches his garment, and as it seems as though she has gotten away with it because she was immediately healed, all of a sudden Jesus asked her, a question that nobody would think would be a logical question to ask in the midst of a crowd who touched me. Amen. Look at verse 45. It says that Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it. Now, can you imagine if you place yourself there with Jesus in the midst of the crowd, the woman is there, the disciples are there, and Jesus asked, Who touched me? Folks are pushing, folks are trying to get to Jesus. Because it's already been said that Jesus is healing everyone that comes in his presence. And all of a sudden, folks say, it wasn't me. Uh, all right. It wasn't me. I wish I had been the one that touched him. But it wasn't me. I wish it had been me the one that locked me. But it wasn't me. We will quickly let folks know when it wasn't us. And so, if the Bible says, The multitude calls and presses you. And you say, who touched me? Now who better than Peter to ask these two questions? I, I, if I can just use my imagination, I, I don't think anybody else had the gumption or the gall or the nerve to ask Jesus, what in the world do you mean who touched me? You see all these folks around us. But Peter, the one who normally would stick his foot in his mouth, uh, he asked him the question. But Jesus said, somebody touched me. I know everybody around me is denying me, but, but somebody touched me. And because you think that I'm crazy for asking the question, let me tell you how I know somebody touched me. It's because the virtue, the power, I felt it leaving from me. I, I don't know about you, but if you can understand that uh, we may have heard this from the perspective 
with a poor garment that would have had tassels taken from it because he was, after all, a Jew. And so what it is that this woman touched is a tassel, something that's hanging by a string, hanging by a thread from the bottom of his garment. And when she touched it, Jesus asked, Help! Yes, the right. power yes. be from you. So after this woman, the Bible says, after it was apparent that Jesus wasn't going to let it go. Verse 47 says, Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden. In other words, Jesus wasn't going to let this thing go. Yeah. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And we're going to deal with why she was afraid, why she came trembling, why she didn't want to let folks know that she had got a healing. But it had been just enough for her to be able to go home and know that after 12 years, and I don't know, Brother Jerry, if she started this when she first went through puberty or if it happened some other time along her life. And what we do know from the record is that she had spent 12 years and spent all that she had and tried to find a physician that could heal her, but nobody could heal it. All of a sudden, now, immediately, without Jesus saying a word, without him giving any prognosis, any diagnosis, she was healed. Amen. 48 says, and he said to her daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well go in peace. Many of us here today are familiar with relationships. And some, when it comes down to relationships, relationships subscribe to the notion that there is such a thing as love at first sight. Uh, you know how it goes, they would say the first time I saw that girl, I knew she was going to be mine. The ladies would say the first time I saw that handsome man. He didn't know it, but I knew that he was mine. And being just a thought out there, oftentimes the women know before we know. Uh, that's just for free. Uh, you know how it goes with relationships. Perhaps it was the first time that she touched you, the first time that he touched you. Perhaps you may have proclaimed that she has magical hands, he has a magic touch. <coughs> and it created what the military would call an SEE, a significant emotional event in your life. Somebody said, well, why is it a significant emotional event? Because you always remember that first touch. Ah, uh, and that first touch, I will submit to you, while it was significant, while you do remember it, I will submit that it was not enough to sustain your relationship. It was almost like a fix. It was like a drug. One touch just wasn't enough. Some people have experienced excruciating pain to the point of tears and have looked forward to their doctor visits for temporary relief. Yet I will submit to you, my brothers and sisters, that just one pill, just one shot, just one massage of that hurting muscle was not enough. When the pain came back and you had to go back again, just one touch didn't do. But those of us for those of you that may have grown up with the security plans, you and I both know that just one touch of that security blanket was not enough. But whenever we perceived that the boogie man was in our room, but whenever we perceived that somebody was in our closet or under our bed, we had to grab a hold to that security plan. Because just one touch was not enough. It's with these thoughts coupled with our scripture lesson that I invite you for a few moments to this sermon talk. Just one touch 
is not enough. If you don't mind, look to the neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. don't take it the wrong way. Don't take it the wrong way. But just one touch, just one touch. is not enough. Not enough. Okay, it's interesting, the account of the story as recorded by the physician and the tax collector. Theologians will call these accounts the synoptic account from the synoptic writers Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And for they all wrote about similar stories but from a different perspective. And so I find it interesting the account that the tax collector Matthew gives. You can find it in Matthew 9 and 18. Matthew says, While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died. But come and lay your hands on her, and she will live. Sounds like somebody else has to pay. So Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came behind and touched the hem of his mouth. For well, she said to herself, if I only may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. If you notice, my brothers and sisters, the main focus here of the tax collector who was not a physician, his account is not about the woman, uh, but it's more about the request of a ruler whose daughter had died. It's obvious to us, though, that the unnamed woman gave a memorable account of why she attempted to speak a blessing because Matthew remembers enough to give us an account of what she did and why she did it. Briefly, there's three points I want to make in attempt to answer uh, to deal with our subject. One touch is not enough. First of all, let us look at the room. Somebody said, well, Reverend, I didn't read any rumor in both of those scriptures, and you would be correct. But if you go a little bit uh, ahead of this story, in Matthew 8, verse 16 and 17, we find these words, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with death. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And healed all that were sick. You don't mind with the neighbor behind you in front of us. Don't want you to wear the one on the side. And say, neighbor, it says to heal them all. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Elias the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sins. You know, rumors can be a bad thing. We've talked about rumors at HHMBC before. Rumors can start wars. Rumors can start fights. Rumors can cause two family members not to talk to each other for years and years. All because of a rumor. But with so much negativity being added to rumors, here's a time that we can say that a rumor was a good thing. For we read that everyone who came to Jesus was being healed. And if I can use my spiritual imagination as I read through this story, I can imagine that this woman who had suffered for 12 